Hello everyone, welcome back to lesson 11. In this lesson, we are going to talk about transformations on graphs, translations and reflection. Before we do translation and reflection, we are doing some vertical line test to decide when you see a graph, whether this graph is function or not function. There is an example, determine if the following graphs represent a function. To, to check if a graph is function or no, we have vertical line test. Vertical line test is like this. On the graph, if we draw one vertical line, it should cross at only one point. If it did, then this is a function. This graph is a function because if I draw a vertical line, it crosses at only one point. We don't have to draw only one vertical line. We draw as many as we like. So if I do another vertical line here, it crosses again at only one point. If I do vertical line here, it crosses at only one point. If I do a vertical line here, it crosses at only one point. This means this graph is a function. Second graph, this one is not a function because if I draw a vertical line, it crosses at two points. This is not a function. If I draw a vertical line, it doesn't cross at all, but here on the side, it crosses at two points. We don't care about these a lot because we have graphs that are function and they don't have graph at some points. For example, if I want to graph square root x, the graph is like this. Then if I do a straight line here, it doesn't cross. It doesn't matter. I cannot make the decision based on this, but when I draw a straight line here, it crosses at only one point another straight line only one point this means this is a function this one is not function this is function let's look at the third diagram the third diagram is about a straight line a straight line if I draw a straight line here vertically crosses at only one point cross at only one point this is function this one it's a parabola if I draw a vertical straight line, cross at only one point, then this is function. Here we have some points, only points, we don't have line or curve. Then again, if I draw a vertical straight line here, it crosses at two points, this is not function. One straight line is enough to say it's not function when it crosses at two points. Shifting, this is the main purpose of this lesson, and it's more important. Shifting can help us find domain, can help us find range, can help us graph, can help us sketch quickly, can help us understand limits and continuity later. Then let's understand. Now, to understand shifting of functions, shifting means moving the places or reflection. Let's, for example, take this function fx equal to x squared as the parent function. Now let's see what change on x can affect on the graph. Look at the first one. Let's keep this here. If I write instead of x, x plus 2, x plus 2 inside the function, then I had x squared. This time it will be x plus 2 all squared. x plus 2 all squared. This plus 2 will move the graph two units to the left, okay? This is a very common mistake, students. Be careful about it. A lot of students, when they see plus two, they feel like it goes to the right, but it doesn't. It goes to the left, two units. There is no up or down. The graph was here. The vertex was here. With this plus two, it goes two units to the left. If I write negative numbers like f of x minus 3, then it will be x minus 3 squared. This minus 3 will move the graph 3 units to the right. For x, when the change is on x, it's the opposite. Minus goes to the right, plus goes to the left. Here, x minus 3 all squared. x squared was this, the vertex was at 0, 0, but x minus 3 should move 3 units to the right then the vertex will be at 3. Minus 3 
moves the graph three units to the right. These are left and right. Now let's see up and down, how up and down work. Up and down does not affect the x inside the function. Like we had x squared, x squared stays as x squared, but we add or subtract it by another number. So again, if we look at this, fx is x squared. The fx didn't change. We only added a number to it. So this time, vertically, it's okay. When we say plus one, it goes up one unit. When we say minus two, it goes down two units. When the change is on y, fx is y, then when the change is on y, y plus one means the graph goes up one unit. fx is x squared, x squared is the same. Before we had x minus the number or x plus the number, all squared. This time x squared is the same. Plus one moves the graph one unit up. Minus two moves the graph two units down. This time it's combined. If I have x minus 2, f of x minus 2, then plus 1. The x minus 2 inside will move the graph two units to the right. Plus 1 outside will move the graph one unit up. So before we had the graph, we had the graph like this. If we focus on the vertex, the vertex was at 0, 0. Now, after this transformation, this graph, this vertex, should move two units to the right because it's minus 2, it goes to the right, and this plus 1 will move the graph one unit up. This means this vertex moved two units to the right, after that, one unit up. So instead of 0, 0, this time it's at 2, 1. That was all about left, right, up and down. This time, if we add a negative here, if we add a negative, the graph will be upside down. There are two ways of adding a negative for the function. If the function is as it is, fx, everything is the same, except we add a negative from the beginning. This drops the function down. This reflects the function about x-axis. This is x-axis. This is x-axis, then this graph, the graph of x squared was like this. Now because of this negative, negative x squared has the graph upside down. This means it's reflected through x-axis. The reflection is about x-axis. Then how the reflection will be about y-axis if the change is on x? If instead of x, we write negative x. This will reflect the graph through y-axis. Here, this is a combined transformation again. This minus 2 will move the graph two units to the right, while this negative x will reflect the graph. From this side, when it's at 2, it will be reflected to the other side of x-axis. This means the reflection is around y-axis. So from 2, it will go on negative 2. This is reflection. This is a good note, and you can find this in the book as well. Let's analyze this. When y is equal to fx, this is the original graph. If we want to move this horizontally, c units to the right. c units to the right means f of x minus c. If we want to move it horizontally, c units to the left, then it's x plus c. Plus moves it to the left, minus moves it to the right. For up and down, which is called vertical shift, if we want to move the graph c units up, then fx stays as it is, we only write at the end plus c. Vertical shift c units down, fx stays as it is, at the end we write minus c. 
Reflection about x-axis, we change the function negative, then the function. Reflection through y-axis, we change x. And instead of x, we write negative x. And if we change both, the function is the same and we wrote negative in, in the beginning. And we replace each x with negative x. This will be reflection about the origin. Let's have an example about this. Reflection about the origin, this means if we have a graph here at this point, okay? Then when we change, uh, let's say this is fx. Then if I write negative fx, the graph will drop down. And if I add a negative for the x, it goes to this side, then it will be like this. This is about the origin means it goes to the other side, then drops, or we can say it drops reflection through x-axis, then it goes to the other side through a reflection about y-axis. This is the origin. Now let's do some exercises about reflection and transformation. This is a very important exercise. Here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven graphs. We have seven graphs, and we have six functions. Then the question says, in exercises 22 to 27, use the graph y equal to fx. y equal to fx is this one. This is considered as the parent function, or the original graph, to determine the graph of each function. Then let's do all of them on the graph. This is the fx. Now, if we begin with d, graph d is the same as fx, only it moved 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units to the left. 5 units to the left means it's f of x plus 5. d is f of x plus 5 because uh, it's, it doesn't have any vertical change. The change is only horizontal and it went one, two, three, four, five units to the left. Five units to the left means plus five. If we look at this one, A, A is also horizontal. A is horizontal, but A is a reflection as well. The function fx will be reflected if we write negative fx. After the reflection, it went one, two, three, four units to the right. Four units to the right means minus four. So the, the function of A will be negative f of x and four units to the right means minus four. To the left is plus, to the right is minus. Now let's work on G. G is a combined transformation. Combined means there is right and there is up. Let's count the steps. Let's clarify these. Yeah. Now, for G, it's one unit to the right. So of course I know there is X minus one. And it went one, two, three units up. So F of X minus one moves the graph one unit to the right, and to cover the three units up, plus three outside. F of x minus one, plus three. That was G, we did A, we did D. Now let's do E. E is like, the idea is close to G. From here to here, it's one, two, three, four, five, six units to the left, so there's x plus 6, f of x plus 6, because it went 6 units to the left, and 1, 2 units up, that's a plus 2. Now let's do b. If we look at b, using a black pen, yeah, look at b, it's straight down. This is only vertical change. There is no horizontal. 
then the fx stays as fx, fx. It went down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then minus 5. fx minus 5 will move fx to graph B. And finally, C. Let's look at C. There is a reflection, so there is negative fx. For C, there is a reflection, so I know there is negative f. After that, there is a horizontal shift. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six units to the left. This means x plus six. Then two units down, one, two, that's a minus two outside. Then there is minus two outside. What happened if, because of this negative reflected, because of this plus six went six units to the left, and because of this minus two went down two units. So we did all. Then we can match which equation belongs to which graph. Question 31 is also a good question. Use the graph of the function fx equal to square root x. OK, graph of square root x, it's right here. Looks like square root. Then, based on this graph, let's graph the rest. Firstly, part A. Gx is equal to square root x plus 2. If we look at this part, this is the fx fx is square root x, so this is fx, plus 2. This plus 2 will move the graph two units up. So instead of starting at 0, this time it starts at 2. Then the graph will be the same. Looks like a square root. b, h of x is negative square root x. Look at this. This part is fx, and the negative will drop the graph down. And instead of going upwards, this time it goes downwards. The x inside is positive, then it's going towards the positive axis, and the negative outside affects the results, means affects the range, then it goes downwards uh, in front of y-axis. Part C, fx is square root x minus 2. This x minus 2 is inside. This means I'm dealing with some sort of f of x minus 2. This minus 2 moves the graph two units to the right. So the graph, instead of starting at 0, this time it starts at 2, then it goes the same direction. Well, this is the end of the session. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned to see the rest of the book.